All right, welcome back. It's time for us to get into the news review segment right here on Breakfast Daily. Now, uh, this segment is interactive. We do want to hear from you throughout the conversations that we'll be having. And so kindly join us if you have thoughts on the various topics that we'll be discussing with the WhatsApp line 0204-447-033. That's our WhatsApp number. Engage with us. Let us know what you make of the various topics that we'll be discussing this morning. Uh, some of the topics we'll be discussing this morning, uh, organized labor set to embark on strike from October 10th uh, over government's inaction. Uh, we'll be looking at um, this uh, comment here by uh, Alan Chermatin. He says, we'll impose life sentences on illegal minors. And we'll also be looking at a Kosombo Dam spillage uh, conversations, a thousand housing units for victims to begin soon. And this is coming from upon Chroma there. So these are some of the topics we'll be discussing um, on the show this morning. And let me just quickly read before I introduce my guest to you. Um, the organized labor uh, strike that has been threatened. Now, this is on channel1news.com. We have here, organized labor has announced a nationwide strike to set, that's set to commence on October 10th, 2024. In response, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in response to ongoing dissatisfaction with the government's perceived inaction regarding the environmental destruction caused by illegal mining, commonly known as Galamsey. Now, this destructive practice has severely impacted rivers, forest reserves, and farmlands across Ghana. Now, representing various unions across the country, organized labor stated that the strike aims to pressure the government to address their demands, which include a ban on all forms of small-scale mining. In a statement, the leadership of organized labor urged its members to remain at home on the designated days. Now, following the expiration of our deadline and the failure of the government, I quote, uh, to meet our demands on illegal mining, uh, organized labor has decided to declare a nationwide strike with effect on October 10th, 2024. We are therefore calling on all workers to stay at home starting Thursday, October 10th, uh, until the government accedes to our demands. This is a part of the statement. All right, and so that's what we have for you. Let me introduce uh, guests to you. Uh, this morning, I've been joined by Loratu Musa Saka. She's uh, an MPP communication team member, as well as Na Atre Dio Okwe, a member of ND NDC communications team. Ladies, you are welcome. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. Yeah, how are you doing? Mm, grace abounds. Yeah. Thank God for the gift of life. Okay. Mm. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, life. All right. Okay, good. Fantastic. Let's begin with that um, story that I just read um, there. Um, okay, you know what? Let's rather, let's rather begin with the EC story. Um, the the uh, 2024 general elections, EC denies request for uh, forensic audit of voter register. Um, let me take you to an article, and then we can just get in right into it. Okay, so let's take a look at um, this story on channel1news.com. Okay, all right, so the National Democratic Congress uh, has called for a comprehensive multi-stakeholder inter-party examination of the uh, Electoral Commission's IT system. Now, this demand follows admissions by the EC regarding significant vulnerabilities and discrepancies in the 2024 Provisional Voters Register. Now, during an inter-party, a special inter-party advisory committee meeting held on October 1st, 2024, the EC acknowledged several critical issues including the illegal transfer of voters, erroneous additions to the transfer list, and the presence of corrupt files in the provisional register. Now, the EC also admitted <coughs> excuse me, that their IT system is susceptible to data manipulation and infiltration by both officials and non-officials with access to login credentials. 
Now, in response, ENDC's Functional Executive Committee has emphasized the urgent need for a thorough review of the EC's IT infrastructure. Uh, the party believes that addressing these vulnerabilities is crucial to ensuring the integrity of the upcoming December 7th, 2024 elections. Now, FEC, and, and I quote, further welcomes the decision by the Electoral Commission to re-exhibit the updated provisional voters register. Uh, we, however, recommend that the re-exhibition exercise should be conducted online and offline at the exhibition centers. Additionally, the NDC demands a multi-stakeholder and inter-party examination of the IT system of the Electoral Commission with the aim of addressing the vulnerabilities that the EC itself ad has admitted to, which, vul which vulnerabilities led to several of the anomalies we have raised. Clearly, the vulnerabilities in the IT system of the Electoral Commission can be exploited by criminals to compromise the integrity of the December 7th elections if not addressed. The NDC statement that was issued on Tuesday said. All right, let me just start now with uh, Natre. Um, so, basically, the request that um, initially was made uh, by the NDC um, and the informer carries it, a number of uh, papers carry it as well, the Ghanaian publisher carries it, says, um, we, the informer says, we won't compromise our integrity or independence, and then it says, um, EC shreds forensic audit request, insists NDC has no proof. But in a, in a total more full um, statement that we have on um, Channel One News, it looks like those concessions have been made on all sides. Mm -hmm. EC has made some concessions. Um, the NDC has made some concessions. Um, things are things are looking good. Oh, David, let me say good morning to you. Good morning, Lorato, and good morning to our viewers who have made time to join us. This morning, I bring appreciation from the office of former President His Excellency John Dramani Mahama to the clergy of Ghana. He is grateful that yesterday you made time to worship with him. He is grateful that yesterday you made time um, to give him counsel going into the administration that we anticipate God to bless him with, effective 7th January 2025. And so to the clergy, the NDC is grateful. We would heed to your counsel and keep us in prayer as we reset Ghana. Now, let the records reflect mm. that the NDC is going into the 7th December elections with zero trust for the Electoral Commission. Mm. Beyond the register that we've, that we've raised concerns about, mm. beyond the IT system that the EC itself has admitted that it is, you know, vulnerable in some cases, we think that the EC has not also conducted itself in a manner that merits the trust of the NDC and the trust of other political parties and the trust of the Ghanaian voter as a whole. Now, David, you know what? If elections are held free and fair any time, the NDC would win that election. Let the records reflect same. So you see, you have some very oh, key oh, members. So if you permit me to land. So you have very key members of the Electoral Commission who we have known to be partyful soldiers. Now, David, can you even imagine that sometime soon to come, Madame Joyce Bar Mukhtari is made an Electoral Commissioner. Would the NPP allow, or sometime soon to come, if you see me as a commissioner of the EC, you as a media person, when you question the compromises I may make on the basis that I belong to the NDC, but today, I mean, the whole country wants the NDC to keep quiet about the appointment that the president has made to the Electoral Commission. Now, going forward, the presidency has even refused to pay attention to anybody be it civil society organization who says that you need to revoke the appointment that you have made 
onto the Electoral Commission of key party people that we know, the likes of Dr. Apia Heni and co, who have sat on platforms to actually communicate for the new patriotic party. So if the NPP has a referee in this election at the EC, you think that if the NPP has a referee, the NDC should trust that referee? Obviously not. And so for us, all we are going to this election with is extreme vigilance, accounting for every vote, accounting for the confidence that the good people of Ghana have reposed in us. Now, let me also say that the, NP, the NDC does not have any, any, any battle, for lack of a better expression, with the Electoral Commission. We are, are sure? not anti it. No. You don't trust them. But if I don't trust you, that means I have a, a, an issue with you. But you, it, must, you must have an issue with me. That's why you don't no, trust what, me. No, what, what I'm saying is that uh -huh. if I don't trust you, does that mean I'm anti-David? Okay. That's what Fair I'm enough. saying. Fair we enough. don't trust the EC. The EC. That's what I want the records to reflect. Now, let me take you through some of the reasons why the NDC is saying that. And I'm wondering why Lorato is giggling. And so when it is her turn, nobody yeah, should sure say that. I'm sure you will find out soon. I'll find, so maybe you tell her to maybe stop that. No, but giggling is not... Uh, it's allowed. Is it, distra is it disrupting it, it, It's allowed. I'm asking you, David, is it disrupting David, you? is it allowed? Is it disrupting you? You're asking you? whether it's disrupting is me. Is it disrupting you? David, you're asking me. It's a let's, question. Let's, you just let's, answer it. David, let's make progress. Okay, let's make progress. Okay. And so... In the constituency of our minority leader, mm -hmm. some 3,000 people were transferred without their consent, without their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, let me by what it takes, right, for someone to be transferred. So an individual, David, an individual now, what does it take for the EC to actually transfer my vote? Mm -hmm. I would personally have to go to the district EC office, right, and be given a form to apply that I don't want to vote in this constituency again. I reside in this constituency. And in the constituency you want to actually move to, you should have resided in that constituency for like a year, right? Mm. So you must personally be present. And in the liveliness test that we are questioning, you must, the, the system must actually accept a live photo of you, mm. not an already taken photo. Okay. So on which grounds, right? Were this liveliness photos taken when the individuals were not present? Don't we have a reason to say that we don't trust the EC? In the Pusiga matter and other areas that the NDC has pointed out to the Electoral Commission. And David, if you care to know, the Electoral Commission has actually accepted that indeed these errors that the NDC has pointed out, mm. they are true. Mm. And we have worked on them. Mm. It is an admission that until the NDCs are let or whistleblowing, the register had inherent flaws. How about those flaws that the NDC has not pointed out? You think that the referee cares about working on them? Absolutely not. Why, why, do, you, why do you take that position? I, I, from yesterday's conversation and everything that was going on, it felt as though the EC has a continuous program of fixing things and working on things. So why don't we trust that by the time it's time to release the final voters register, all these being provisional, those issues and challenges you have would have been sorted out. So I'll state again mm -hmm. that we don't trust the EC. Okay. In as much as we don't trust the EC, mm -hmm. we will take the EC's word for it that it is a provisional voters register, mm -hmm. bearing in mind that they have promised to give us the updated register. Absolutely. Now, our work as a party does not end. And on this note, I'll commend Dr. Manibuama, Director of Elections, for the good work himself and his team are doing. For us, the work doesn't end. Mm. It is our contribution to a free and fair election. Mm -hmm. It is the NDC's contribution to ensure that the votes that are cast are the true representation of the will of the people. Mm. So that when the MPP says it is possible, they don't mean to say, is it possible? <laughs> it should be, it is possible in the truest sense of the word <laughs> and not a possibility that has been enhanced by electoral commission that they have packed with party food soldiers. And of course, if they are setting this precedent and the likes of you media people think that it is okay 
for us to have the party foot soldiers there, then fair enough. We leave everybody who has refused to speak about this matter to their own conscience. But fast forward, we have the EC for two things. One, that the voter register be audited and then their IT system be audited. They tell us that the, the voter register is a, pro, I mean, it's a progressive process. Yeah. And so we are taking their word for it that they would give us a register updated, a register that is near perfect as soon as practic mm. practicable. Now, on the matter of the re-exhibition that they speak about, we want to recommend to the Electoral Commission mm. that you see it should not just be online. It should be both online and offline. Yes. So I should be able to walk, for example, to my polling station yeah. and then check my details. I should be able to, from the comfort of my home, check my details. If you do it one-sided, it may not work for some demographics of the voter population. Mm. Because somebody in the rural area who does not have access to internet, if you do it strictly online, how will the person access? Mm. If somebody is in, in you know, their home, their office's busy schedule, you need to give that person the online access to check. Mm. So for us, we think that it must be comprehensive. It must not be one-sided for the AC to say that, well, we are choosing um, online or offline. Now, on the matter of the EC's IT system, the admission that it is susceptible to vulnerabilities yeah. is an indication that the system needs an audit. And so for that, we still stand by recommending to the committee allow your, your IT system to be audited. So you see... You read a story yeah. where Madame Jean Mensa is saying that they won't compromise their uh, independence. Mm. And then another story that. says that, well, we can do the work without any external support. The same Mrs. Jean Adukwe Mensa is telling us this today. A while back in 2015, she, as the, as the IEA boss, told the then Electoral Commission that allow for external support, right? Hit to the call of the NPP for the register to be audited. And that would have been done, and that was done with external support. Today, external support does not appeal to Madame Jen Mensa. I see, of course, it is time and seasons. So we hear. But what we are saying also at the party is that our vigilance, we are on. Now, so you see, let me also add that if the EC decides to toe the line it is going, transferring people illegally, without their consent, what will happen, without their knowledge, what will happen is that, David, by the time you have gotten to your polling station and you want to vote, mm. your name is not there. And now they are proposing a certain absentee, uh, absentee list. Which of the CI supports what the AC is, is, is telling us today? And so for us, our position is clear. We have gone to IPAC. Thank you to the media. They had our position. They had our point that the EC register needs an audit they on it the EC's IT system needs an audit that they still stand their point that it doesn't we also still recommending to them that it does and so for it's us going forward we expect that in the shortest possible time the electoral commission should give us a register that is near perfect a register that people have not been illegally transferred to MPP strongholds in the name of EC possible. Okay. The EC will not make it possible for the NPP to win this election. All right, okay. Ratu, you'll bite on this, yes. Good morning and uh, good morning to now. Good morning. Um, um, and our viewers, uh, it's just intriguing and uh, quite interesting. After all that we all had the opportunity to watch yesterday. Mm. It wasn't like there was an IPAC meeting and they ended and parties decided to do press conferences or address the press and the EC also come in with their uh, perspectives. Mm. There was, this was telecasted live across the country. I intermittently followed it on your networks and on the Electoral Commission's Facebook page. But you see, that is what I said the other time. You were the same person sitting here. The NPC is running away from their own shadows. Also. They can't trust themselves. So if they can't trust the EC, I don't think it's any news. 
the leadership of the NDC that took them to election 2020 hasn't changed much. In fact, the flag bearer is the same. The general secretary who went as their main um, person at the ele election petition hearing is now their chairman. So you can't expect anything different. Same way of doing things, same way of approaching when they see defeats coming. Yesterday they were reminded, and if they want to quote the EC in 2016, we are quoting them nine years ago. What did they say? The EC should be left. That's their flag bearer. The EC should be left to do their work. What did their current chairman say? There are adequate laws to address the issues. So what has changed? What has changed that the NDC, and I said it, look, if probably they had listened to Dr. Dufour then, they will be chasing their own shadows. They will be afraid of their own ways of doing things. The man raised issues with their internal register. They said what? It was clean because they believed that they were doing the right thing. Yesterday, and when they say that they want a broader stakeholder, I'm wondering where maybe stakeholder means something else that they may have to explain to us. But yesterday's IFAC meeting, you had all the uh, parties, you had CSOs, and other invited people, you had the media. How broad can this be? But you see, for them, Admitting to the fact that they were crying wolf is not something that they would do. They said what? They have 250,000 people who have been affected. Where is the data? Probably if the EC thought or knew that telecasting IPAC life is what would have made the NDC, and I'm told they are. General Secretary came out with a press release yesterday admitting and accepting the EC's, um, uh, like they termed it, promise to release the provisional, provisional voters register. The updated provisional. Uh, exactly. Mm. Why are exhibitions done? Why are all the processes done? David, even uh, apart from the register, the ballot papers. Yesterday, the EC explained it, and I have been part of the process. The day that it is brought to the police, regional police mm, headquarters, yeah. parties, parties are there, are the printing. Mm. Okay. And then, let's not even go far. They just, uh, not long ago, we had a district level election. Mm. Agents are kept at the printing houses, wherever it's being printed. When it's being taken from the print houses to the police headquarters, mm. agents follow. You go there, go through all the backs, constituency by constituency, and every constituency has its agents there, according to the various political parties. You take all the serial numbers, document them, so mm. that the night or the day of election, yeah. depending on how far you are from there, regional police uh, headquarters. And even when they are going to put it in the army, you follow up there to be sure they are keeping it there. And some parties even keep their agents throughout mm. at that venue. So what are we talking about? But you know, like I said, they're just chasing their own shadows. It's their way of doing things. They can't trust themselves till date. I wasn't expecting them to be able to provide the 20, uh, 250 names. Because till date, they can't tell us on their side their results for 2020. I doubt if they can even tell us for 2016. And I said, I don't think that we should waste everybody's time. And uh, as we said, the flag bearer of the new patriotic party is in Western North. Mm. His running mate is in Ashanti. His wife, the second lady, is in another region. Party executives are moving across. Constituency executive, polling station. That is how you convince people 
to God. Not be accosting the EC in the name of you don't trust the EC. You trust yourselves. That is how you win elections. And we've all come to learn that elections are won at the polling station. Yeah. If you don't put your structures in place, if you don't educate your agents, if you don't know how to collate results, unfortunately, they haven't proven that they can do that. If you don't even know your own now chairman, who used to be general secretary, even calculator using it was a problem. And you think that uh, antagonizing the EC is what is going to win the, the election. We can only wish them well. But we are focused and know that going down to the people, explaining your policies to them, like Dr. Baumia is doing, with the free tertiary for uh, disabled, with the issuing of Ghana cards to uh, children under 18, with the interventions that are going on in our education center with, uh, services, with the uh, addition of uh, in, uh, increment of continuous professional development for teachers from 1,200 to 2,400 for professional teachers and 2,800 for non-professional teachers. All those things are what you talk to the people. Talk about free research, you talk about the one constituency ambulance. We may have challenges. You need to explain why we are where we are. That is how you win election. That is how you win the confidence of the uh, electorate, not to antagonize the EC. And I think that we should just stop wasting uh, our time and resources of taxpayer and allow them to do what they want to do. They are best at chasing, uh, going on wild goose chases. We saw it in 2020, mm -hmm. and I won't be surprised if they do the same in 2024. Hey, All right. This yeah. morning. No, 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 actually, you need to. Just, just a second. No, no, no. I will take a break. We'll, a we'll come back after the break. You'll get a chance to, to make your point. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back.